Hey everyone, this is Zach, the broker of Zach Taylor Real Estate. Today, I want to go over Dot Loop Basics 101. So, with all our agents on our onboarding Zoom, we've covered kind of our compliance side of Dot Loop. But in case you need a refresher or in case uh, you're curious about how Dot Loop works, today is all about just kind of 101 the basics. So that way, you guys can be up and running and kind of know what to do when you're in the system. So, Dot Loop again is all of our transaction management. So, it's got all of our contracts, how we submit stuff for compliance, how we get paid. Uh, on closing. So all that is in here. All the Tennessee realtor forms are in here. So probably 99% of the forms you need are going to be in here anyways. And so let's go through how to use this system. So when you log in for the very first time, you're going to be sent an email with a welcome link, a sign-up link. And that sign-up link includes the paid version that we cover for our agents. So if you don't see the ZT in the top, that means you're not in the right place. So if the ZT is up there, that means, hey, this is the premium account. So uh, just check that first. And then also here's our dashboard. So again, when you're in dot loop, each one of these is called a loop. A loop is just a file, that's all it is. So we say for our compliance side, just create one loop per person or per transaction. That way you don't have like five of these going for one listing. And I know I use that example for all of our onboarding Zooms, but just keep it all together. Just keep it nice and neat. Let's not create several of these because then everybody gets confused where documents are for that specific transaction. Uh, if you need to grab a single form without having to create a whole loop, you're like, hey, I don't need to create a whole loop. I just need to grab a form real quick and print it off. We'll come up here to templates. So if you click on templates, now here's our different subfolders and then the big folders at the bottom. Uh, I might have a couple more because I'm the admin, but you'll see the listing docs, common addendum. So you can click through these and it has those corresponding type of documents. So most listing documents are in here most common addendum, the most commonly used ones are in these subfolders. Worst case, everything's in tar forms, like all 160, 70 tar forms, they're all in here. If you need something real quick, you just search it, VA, addendum, for example, and you can hit download, make a copy, whatever you need to do, that's right there. Let's say I need a wire fraud real quick, wire fraud warning, that's right there. So then I can just download it, open it, whatever I need to do. If I need to get back to my dashboard, I just click right here, loops. Now back to my loop. So now I wanna create one of these. I wanna create a file. I have a client ready to write an offer. So I'll hit add loop. And for this example, for we'll say Susan Smith, we're just starting to work together and um, I'll get to when she wants to write an offer. But we'll just say, I've met Susan Smith. We wanna work together. She, wa um, she wants to be my client. So I'm gonna create a loop. I can change the name later, but for right now, it's just gonna be Susan Smith. If she's already ready to write an offer, you can put the address there, but I'm just gonna put Susan for now. Continue. Now here's our different templates. So these auto populate, hey, when I click buying residential, all my buying forms are gonna pop up. Hey, I click listing, all my listing residential forms are gonna pop up. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump this screen to our buyer template, that way you can see it. So let's say buying, continue. You don't have to add a, a photo. What a photo does is when you're back on your dashboard, the main one, and you start having all these different loops, sometimes a photo can help you find it quicker. That's really about the only purpose of the photo. So I hit done. It thinks for a second. Now I have Susan Smith, so I can hit view loop. Now I'm inside the loop for Susan Smith. So if I hit back to my loops or I hit the smiley face, both of them take me back to the dashboard. And you can see Susan Smith's loop has popped up right here. So let me click it. Now I'm back in. So here is everything you might need Working with Susan Smith as a buyer, we have probably 95% of the forms you're going to need every single deal. And these are the minimum. So what we do is we show you, hey, here's what's required. Here's what's optional. Here's what's required. That way it kind of helps you. And this is kind of almost your checklist of the minimum requirements. Now, in previous videos, you see with submitting offers and everything else, you might need to add forms. And that is okay. Contract docs, for example. Let's say we need a lead-based paint disclosure. So we can hit add document templates. And again, that's that same template screen from way up here, but here's all the different subfolders. And then I can always go to tar forms, search for lead-based paint. And that's right here. Check it. I could hit copy. It'll send it to the loop. Let's say I just want to grab something else. Let's say I want to go to buying documents. And for whatever reason, I need the notification form right now. So I'll copy that. Now it's imported both these forms in here. If you need a form from your computer, that is an option too. You would just hit browse. It'll open your computer docs. And then you can click on the file and add it into here. Uh, there is also an email. Uh, I, I don't really use that, but that, that's kind of dot loop. 
uh, level two. Right now, it's just the basics. So if I want to get rid of this screen, I just click this, click Add Document, puts that away. And you see those two forms that I added are right here. And now Dotloop lets you kind of reorganize stuff. I can move this down here if I want. I can move it back. The only thing you can't do is remove required fields. You can't require those, or you can't remove those. So you can remove anything optional that you've added. You can remove those. And to do that, you just hit the three dots, archive. And now it's gone. Dotloop does not let you fully delete documents. It keeps a copy of everything for seven years. The state minimum is three. It keeps it for seven. So that really helps you out. Uh, but their version of delete is archive. So it's still there. And to access that, you just hit show archived. So if I hit that, now it's here. And if I need it, I'll just hit the three dots, unarchive. And now it's back active again. So let's move it back to the top. Let's hit this. Let's just archive this one one more time. And then let's say this is actually, let's say I need to add a document, browse. Let's say this is just my pre-approval. I'm just making this up right now, but let me add it. I've been having some weird internet connection issues today. So let's add this back again. There we go. So now it's added it. Now let's say, oops, that's, that's not the right file name. I could rename it. Or this file right here, this slot, because it's grayed out, that means you need to add something. If it's bold, that means there's something already there. Grayed out means you need to add something. And that's why when I hover over, it says add file. So I can add file, computer, pulls up my computer files, or I can add file from templates. That's a template screen. Or because I added it up here with add document, it just adds it up here. Now that it's in here, I can click, drag, and when I start hovering over that, it says replace. So if I drop it when it says replace, it drops it into that slot. And then I can always hit the three dots and rename it if I need it. So maybe this is just the pre-approval. Hit enter, done. So now it's, now it's bold. So that means I've filled that line item with a document. So that's now good to go. Let's say, for example, like I said, you cannot archive or delete required items. But let's say this purchase and sale agreement, this copy is only the copy that my client has signed. But this one, let's just rename this for example's sake. This is our bound contract. So really, we only want this one. We don't want this one. So what we can do is take this, click, drag, and now if I hover over it, it says replace again. So it will replace if there's already a document there. It'll replace with the one I'm holding. That's what will prevail. It will actually, in this case, it will delete that old file because I'm putting this on top of this. So drag it, drop. Yes. So now it's right there. And so for compliance sake as well, with this folder, what we've done is we are avoiding agents the day of closing, submitting all documents to us all at once, and then saying, hey, Zach, I have a closing in 30 minutes. Can you prove everything and make sure I get paid? So we are avoiding that and also making your life easier by breaking it into bite-sized pieces along the way. The whole time you work with Susan Smith, we've divided it out to make your life easier. And that way, the day of closing is not stressful, hectic, it is just good to go. So buyer agreement folder. So that is the first time we start working with Susan Smith and we're like, hey, let's work together. All we require to start, exclusive buyer rep, wire fraud. You can see those right here. Now these are optional, highly recommended, but optional. So they're just put there to show they're there. We also have a residential buying checklist. So if you ever get confused, hey, what would I might need when working with Susan or submitting an offer? We do have a checklist here. Uh, but for right now, we need these two signed. Once I get these signed, I come up here, submit for review. Submit for review, buyer agreement folder, submit. And because I have not done anything with these documents, I haven't had any signatures done, nothing. It's saying, nope, you can't submit it until these are finished. So that's kind of a cool thing with the compliance part of it is it will not let you submit unless you have those two items. Uh, same thing down here. So I'm missing a bunch. I'm missing a confirmation of agency, seller's disclosure, signed MLS. So if I hit submit for review, my contract docs, Submit, it's going to block it. And a quick way too, with compliance, I kind of know that you don't have everything if an agent 
clicks everything and hits share, and then they send it to me this way. So if they type Zach Greist and then they add me and then they hit view and share. And now if I get an email and says, hey, this agent has shared this document with you, I automatically kind of know, hey, they probably don't have everything because it wasn't submitted for review. It was just shared with me. So something's off. So that's kind of our workflow is, hey, Susan Smith, get these signed, submit for review. Then this will say submitted. So it'll keep you updated. And then once it's been approved by me, it'll say approved. If it says return, that means you're missing something on that document. Usually I will leave you a note right here. So this note section is just a big note for this whole file. And you can say a new note for Zach. And then you can, Zach, back to notes. And then you can type out a note to me. You can say help. You can say not on the MLS. And I'll explain what that means in a sec. But you can send me notes within this. And when you send me a note, it also sends me an email. So that's very helpful. If you need my attention with anything, obviously you can also call or text me. That's totally fine. But the notes is sends me an email. Uh, let's go through here. So that's kind of the workflow is buyer agreement folder. Susan and I want to work together. I get everything signed, these two documents. I hit submit for review, not share, submit for review. Submit for review, buyer agreement folder, submit. This will say approved. Once everything's approved, you can go to level two. And that's kind of the easy way to look at it too, is level one, level two. Now our contract docs submit within 48 hours of bound contract. Again, that is not a rule. It's not like, hey, if you wait 72 hours, you're gonna be penalized or fined. It's just a general guideline. Like, hey, the quicker you submit stuff to us, the quicker we can check to make sure you're okay. Um, then you move on. Once everything's approved here, go to mid transaction docs. And then finally closing docs. So uh, the other notes about these folders is when you have everything approved in one folder, kind of just leave it alone because everything's approved. So exclusive buyer rep wire fraud approved. I wouldn't add the contract in this folder or I wouldn't add the closing docs in this folder. Everything's approved. This is just buyer agreement folder. So those are approved. Here's all my first contract docs. So the initial time when it was bound, here's all those documents. Those go in here. Now, everything from the time you're bound up until closing goes in here. So this could be sometimes the biggest folder because you start adding everything in here just to document yourself really well. So maybe you add the inspection report, maybe the appraisal report, maybe you're, you use the repair amendment or proposal, uh, whatever price amendments, closing date extensions, anything from the time you're bound up until the day of closing goes in here. And then only in closing docs goes closing docs, final inspections, that goes in here. So that's kind of the different folders. And again, it's meant to divide it up. So that way, by the time you get to closing, it is just the CDA that you're worried about. Now let's go through dot loop basics with using the system itself. So uh, I mentioned, hey, get, get this all signed. Well, what does that actually entail? So if I open these documents, open. Now I've opened two documents instead of just click on one line item and open one. And let me, let me show that. So I can go through one by one and open this document, fill this out, then come back out, then click back into wire fraud, fill that out. Instead to streamline it, I wanna open both at the same time, open. So now I have two documents open. And when you do that for the first time, this autofill box will pop up. Now autofill is not required, but the more you put in, the more it'll save you time, especially when you're writing contracts and there's five, six, seven documents. One of the line items down here will be address. So you could put in the address. And then when I hit autofill, it'll add it to all seven documents versus having to go through one document at a time, open them all up together, use autofill. So let's say, for example, select person, add person, say Susan is my client. So Susan Smith, I need an email address for Susan in order for her to electronically sign these documents. Dot loop does require one email per person. So if you have a husband and wife, you do need two separate emails. It prevents one person for signing on behalf of both of them and then the other party saying, hey, I never agreed to that. So you need one email per person. Uh, you, you don't need any of this other information. I just like the emails. You can assign a role to Susan Smith so she can be the buying agent, listing agent, buyer, whatever you need. Let's say buyer. You can also send an intro email if you need to. I don't do that because they're about to get these documents anyways. Uh, that is a feature. So let me hit add person. 
So now Susan's here, autofill. Now with dot loop, as you can see, anything that might need to be filled out already has a text box in there for you. That way it saves you time because otherwise, if we didn't have all these blue boxes here, you would have to go through on these blank documents on this PDF and hit add and there's be a text box and you'd have to do that like a hundred times per document. So everything that you might need to fill out is already on here for you. So it lets you fully fill it out. So let's say this entered into on this 25th day of May, 2022. There's also a calendar button. So this terminates, this agreement terminates when, click the little calendar, pops up a calendar, then click the over, changes the time frame. So now I can go through, enter in all this stuff. I can type in a commission amount that I want from the client. Whatever I need, it allows you to do, it's got the percentage, whatever you want to negotiate with your client. So everything's fillable. And then when I go down to the bottom, it'll already have Susan assigned here. Just double check it. But the point of all this is we have our two documents opened and see nothing's assigned here. So I'm gonna go assign field, Susan. Assign field, Susan. So now it shows Susan where to sign. So now I'm ready for her to electronically sign these documents. There's two ways to do this. The first way is way easier. You get the email and you hit save and share. You open up all the documents you need to share to Susan, you hit save and share. So now it shows Susan Smith. She has three fields assigned to her. And then this is the permission level. So can view only. Oh, she can only view these documents. Can sign, she can only sign documents. Can fill and sign. Maybe there's a text box I need her to fill out, something like that, can fill and sign. Uh, can edit in private is a feature. I usually refrain from doing that or restrained from doing that with a client because when you do that, they can now add strike throughs, check boxes, text boxes. And so I don't really want the client to become an attorney instantly. So usually I'm can sign or can fill and sign. So there that is. I can enter a custom message to Susan. Hey, Susan, please review these documents and sign if everything looks good for you. So I can add a message and when I hit share, it'll send that message in the email. I can attach PDF to email. So what that means is these two documents, it'll attach, it'll send her an email, but it'll also attach to that email, these documents as a PDF. Maybe in case she can't figure out how to use dot loop, it's really simple. It's just a click button. Uh, watch the previous video on how to submit an offer in dot loop. And you can kind of see the client's view of when they receive a document. Uh, but worst case, maybe she wants to print them out, save a copy for herself for, uh, for record's sake, but that is an option, share. So this is the easiest way to do this. The second way to have a client sign these electronically is to meet them in person. And there's a dot loop app. You can bring your laptop, computer, whatever has internet access when you meet that client, open up your documents like we have them here and then hit more host in person signing. And when that allows, it says host in person signing, select a person you want to sign, Susan, continue. And it'll say, hand the device to Susan and she can click through on my device and sign off on everything. So that helps. Uh, let's go back. And let's go, let's add a document. Let's add browse. Let's see. So I'm just adding this as an example document. Let's go here. So when you've added a PDF, you get even more customization because it's just a flat PDF. It's not a dot loop document. So now if I hover over add, I can add a signature box. I can add initials, text. And if I hover over this little triangle, I can change the size of this text box. Same with uh, initials too. If you can make it smaller, you can make it bigger. Date, again, it's that little calendar box. So I can fill out whatever the date. Checkbox, you can add check boxes. Again, you can make these a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. If you had a checkbox, just make sure to check it. It's a radio button. So kind of another version of a checkbox. And strike through. So dot loop lets you fully customize forms. So that's the coolest part of all this. And even if you've placed it, you can hover over it. And when those four arrows pop up, now it allows you to move it. 
I can even assign this just to show, hey, Susan, I need you to sign right here. So it just makes her life a little bit easier. I can also still move this around. Sign Susan to some dot loop. So that's how you kind of fill out documents. And then again, I can hit save and share, share. Now, quick pointer with sharing documents. Because I'm admin, I have access to everybody's dot loop. Now, if you share a document with me, because I already have a dot loop account, it creates a duplicate loop. Now we have two going. So remember in the very beginning, I said, let's create one loop per person or transaction. So to avoid that, you don't have to share it with me as the admin. Share it with your clients because they don't have dot loop accounts. That's how they'll get access. That's how they can view it. You can share it with other agents when you're submitting offers. That's okay. But just because I'm admin, it creates a duplicate. So to avoid that, once everything's ready in this contract docs folder or the buyer agreement folder, submit for review. That's the best way to do it. Submit for review, submit. Also with dot loop, when I said notes, there is the notes. This is for the entire loop of Susan Smith, but maybe you have a question just about wire fraud in particular. This tiny note lets you send a note just regarding that document. And you can still send a note to me, you can send a note to Susan, but for just that specific form. So that's, that's kind of cool. If I hit, let me switch this up a little bit. Let me sign. Let me add Taylor, for example, another buyer, add Taylor, assign Taylor. I'm gonna save and share. I'm just gonna send this to Taylor and I'm gonna hit share. So now it says this document has been shared, waiting on others, done. I go back. There we go. So now you can see it says waiting on others. And if you hover over it, it shows you who it's waiting on. So still waiting on Taylor to sign. And then if I hover over this, it also shows who has access to this document. So right now, if I hover over the little, the little icon person, it says shared with Taylor. So that's another cool thing. And then let me go ahead and have Taylor uh, jump on her email and look at this document. All right, so now that Taylor was shared the document, You'll get an email to say, hey, Taylor shared it. So because I'm not in my email, I just want to refresh this page real quick. And now it shows signed. So now Taylor has signed this document. So it just really helps you keep track of where everything's at, which one have been shared with people, which ones haven't. I can also, a really cool feature is hit the three dots, history. And now it shows Taylor has viewed this document at, on May 25th at 3.21 PM. Taylor has signed this document at 3.21 p.m. So that's really cool too. Also, if you're sharing it with like other agents, you can keep track of, hey, they've opened this document and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Um, let's say, for example, I need to change any of the details with this loop. If I hover over here, view details. Now I can change different info. So maybe Susan Smith, I entered the wrong email. I can change the email. You can also change the loop name. Click out, it saves it. You can input some stuff as like a autofill on the backside for the details. That's all in here. Back. So again, just kind of mess around with dot loop. That is dot loop 101 for you. And in future videos, I'll kind of show submitting offers with dot loop and different ways to use it and more advanced trainings with dot loop. But again, that's kind of the basics. Create practice loops. Uh, practice sending it to yourself, kind of checking out what it looks like. But this is how you kind of add documents, submit for review is the biggest thing, kind of our workflow with the different folders. That way, by the time you get to closing, it's only our CDA form. You don't have to worry about submitting a whole package of documents and getting everything approved. Everything's already done by that time. So hope this helps you guys out. I'll see you guys later.